Recently, it's come out that Kherson is going to be outright annexed by Russia. Yeah, the local authorities in Kherson. Uh, originally, they were going to have like some sort of referendum in Kherson. Kherson, for those of you who don't know, if you look at a map, it's a city just to the north of the Crimean Peninsula, right? Right across the Isthmus. Right there is Kherson. And it's this big city that the Russians captured early on, captured completely, and they have the Russian flag, they're using Russian rubles for commerce and, and whatnot, you know, at the supermarket and local stores. I mean, they've really russified the, the city really fast. And there was supposed to be a referendum. That's what they were talking about originally, like a referendum like they had in Crimea back in the day, back in 2014. Hmm? But now all of a sudden, you know, the, the local authorities aren't saying like, screw that, we're not going to have like any referendum. We're just going to apply straight to be annexed by Russia. Now, a lot of Western observers, a lot of Western analysts and commentators are saying, oh, the Russians feel this, that, the other. They feel that their grip is slipping in Ukraine and all kinds of nonsense. No, they don't, they don't worry about losing their grip on Ukraine. And they certainly don't worry about uh, losing Kursan. Kursan is going to be theirs forever. No, what's going on is that you have to understand the rationale for going for Kursan. Why the Russians? They only put like 30,000 troops to, you know, uh, to do an offensive around Kiev. But I do believe it was something like 50, 60,000 troops for their push out of Crimea north towards Kursan. And you have to understand why. Well, because you see, in 2014, when Crimea broke away from Ukraine and became a part of Russia, the Ukrainians, the Ukrainian government, dammed up the canal that fed Crimea fresh water. Now, this canal accounted for roughly 85% of their freshwater needs, and something like three quarters of this water that was flowing through this canal fed Crimea's agricultural, you know, the farmlands and such. And Crimea is a very rich, soil-rich uh, area of Ukraine. And so the loss of that water meant no crops essentially. And it caused all kinds of other problems, of course, because you need fresh water, uh, not only for crops, but also for people to drink and also for industry and manufacturing and all the rest of it. I mean, fresh water is necessary. Fresh water is one of the one of those commodities, one of the most essential commodities and the ones that we tend to think of the least. Because, you know, we go to our tap and just turn on the tap and get some water and that's it, right? And, and maybe if we are all fancy, we'll buy bottled water, but, you know, it's just water, you know? How hard can it be to get it? See, in Crimea, it was a big deal. And so when the Russians started this special military operation, they went hard on Kherson because they wanted to get to that dam and they wanted to blow it up. That was actually one of the first things that they did. You know, a week into this invasion, they blew up that dam because they needed to. And as I understand it, uh, they calculated that by 15th of April, water would be flowing normally through Crimea. I haven't heard any news that uh, says otherwise, so let's assume that the water flowing out of, down the uh, Dnieper River is getting to uh, Crimea and feeding its farmlands, and this is going to add on to Russia's agricultural wealth. This canal is very important. And so when you understand this background and you understand how essential water is to Crimea, then you understand why Russia wants to outright annex Kherson before anything else. Because Kherson is where the region where that dam was located. It's actually the only place where that particular canal can be dammed up effectively. Any further north, and it's, it's just not possible. The river is too wide. It's too big. It doesn't really matter. See, there, there, as, a, as a practical matter, it is impossible further north on the Dnieper River to uh, uh, dam up the canal that feeds Crimea. See, Kherson was the region. Kherson. And they captured it, they grabbed it, and now it's theirs. And they're annexing it outright. And why do they want to do this? Because, you see, if Kherson is a part of the Russian Federation, it is Russian land, then the Russians will feel that they have the legal authority to prevent anyone from taking it from them. And see, th this is actually very indicative of the course of this war. You see, 
when this happened, that the Russians had taken on Kherson, taken over Kherson rather, and they announced early in March that people in Kherson would, were going to start using rubles, that's when I realized that the Russians intended to take big chunks of Ukraine. And this is the first chunk. And you see, these various chunks that the Russians are going to take over, they're going to take them over and integrate them fully. And it's smart. You know, you have your army deployed, you know, in the east and the south of Ukraine. And the south Ukraine from, you know, Rostov all the way to Kherson and the Crimean Peninsula, that is <laughs> chock full of Russian soldiers, man, right? And so what are the Russians doing? Well, they're establishing the farthest they know that they can control for sure and holding on to it and integrating into Russia. And after that, they're going to integrate the regions, you know, here's Crimea roughly from your point of view, it would be Crimea, Kherson here to, to the north, and then Zaporozhye, Donetsk, Lugansk, and then Mother Russia right over here, okay? Uh, sorry, I can't do a graphic on this, but you know the problems I'm having right now with my videos. Anyway, the point. See, they're establishing Kherson over here, right north of Crimea. Kherson as theirs. And it'll be a slow process, a slow but inevitable process of integrating the other regions to Russia. And it'll be a land bridge from Mother Russia all the way to Crimea. Crimea is essential. Crimea is the only way, it's the window that the Russians have to the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. They need Crimea, and therefore they've made up their mind that they need Kherson and Zaporozhye and Lugansk and Donetsk, those regions, and they're going to get them one at a time. And this is the first one. And so this indicated to me back in early March that the Russians are going to take pieces, big chunks of Ukraine. They're going to take them and integrate them and make them Russian land. And this is the first step. This is the first stage. It doesn't mean anything other than the Russians wanting to present a fait accompli. They don't want long negotiations because they've already made up their minds. And any kind of referendum or anything like that, it's just going to be like stumbling blocks. And they're like, screw that. Let's just go for it. Because they can. Because they have got the army to enforce this. If they truly felt that their grip was slipping, they wouldn't be bothering with this. They'd be trying to shore up their grip. But Kherson and the whole region, you know, Kherson and the whole region of the north shore of the Black Sea, all the way to Russia, they've got a firm grip on that. They're not letting go. And you watch. This is just the first one. Zaporozhye, Donetsk, Lugansk, and even though Donetsk and Lugansk have been independent and have been treated as such by the Russians, no question that once Kherson and Zaporozhye are annexed to the Russian Federation, then Lugansk and Donetsk will sort of like be invited to annex as well. And they will, happily. Because all these lands are filled with Russian-speaking people who are ethnic Russians and who consider themselves Russians. So it's inevitable. And that's what's going on there. 